Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Uh, just wanted to give you a bit of an update of what's going on, really have a look around the fish room, because we've not done that for a while. We're going to have a look at some new rules that are coming into force very soon that might affect how you buy and sell fish. If you're a hobby reader or a hobbyist, this might affect you. So, World War III is broken out in the crib tank. Um, you know, you always hear from people, they talk about cichlids, how the, the more you have, the better it is because it spreads the aggression. Well, it's definitely true of dwarf cichlids as well, because these guys have been going crazy lately. So what happened was I sold about, I think it was 20 in the space of about two days to some local people on Facebook. Uh, Facebook groups and it seems to have left a number that I've, I think I've got two pairs left in here they've got that's one of them and there's another one over on this side and they've just been beating the absolute crap out of all the other fish in here and to the point where there are some hiding up here one hiding there I put this bit of wood in to break up some sight lines I think I'm going to have to actually just start moving them and separating them out into tanks and just have one pair per tank but when there was loads in here it was fine because see here there you go when there was fine when there was loads in here because it spread the aggression perfectly fine but now they're just constantly fighting uh, and it's not good for them so if that needs to get sorted out uh, rookie mistake number two one of the people that came bought almost all my guppies and I think I've made the silly mistake of I've only left myself with about two or three females. Um, tons of babies in there, so it's just a waiting game to see if we get some more females out there. But I might go and buy a few more to diversify the stock anyway. Uh, and I've started trying to separate them out. So these are the kind of the guppy fry tanks here that I've got a mix of guppies. I don't have any pure line bred guppies or anything like that. They're just all mutts. They're my muck guppies, but I'm trying to separate them out into reds, which I've got up here. I've got blues slash blue greens I'm putting into this tank. And then one of the tanks up there is yellows and yellowy greens, which are going in there. Um, the idea being that I sell them off as mutts, but with distinct colours. Some of these are so cool. Um, these will all be going on my website soon, so definitely check that out if you're interested. Um, I sell most. I sell a lot of these fish privately, because uh, here in the UK it's fine to sell fish that you've bred yourself without needing a pet shop license or anything like that. So I can sell these ones that I've bred. But I thought I'd just centralize it all and have a website and point people at that so go and check that out in the description below if you want any of these whoa right okay that's some new information has come to light since then so in there i'm talking about the fact that if you bred fish yourself you were allowed to sell them without needing any kind of license or any kind of inspections and that sort of thing um, if you wanted to trade fish commercially uh, and import from wholesalers and things like that, then you need effectively a pet shop license. So there are lots of breeders and specialists and sellers who have uh, fish rooms in their home or their small offices or garages and things like that where they do actually have this license because they are selling on a commercial scale. But there are some new regulations coming into force on Monday and the 1st of October whereby anyone who has a business that profits from selling fish must now be licensed and that license is from the local authority um, it's not millions of pounds or anything but it's it's a fairly expensive process and it's fairly in-depth and laborious just to get through the red tape and the paperwork as you might imagine um, so there are a lot of people who are kind of thrown up in arms about this about what's this mean for me and if you read the guidance notes, and I'll put some links down below, 
if you are a hobby breeder and you are just selling off the occasional batch of fry or batch of fish that you bred yourself, it's probably not going to affect you because there are several tests within the, the guidelines that have been released which um, they're the reasonably forgiving. Um, I think it, it has to be a business for one thing and that doesn't mean you need to be registered with Companies House or anything like that but a business is something that's defined as attempting to turn a profit doesn't necessarily have to turn a profit um but uh, they will look into things like how often do you advertise things uh, how often are you selling things what kind of uh, are you going for margins are you trying to make a return i think there was something around uh, 2016 or something uh, it mentions it in the document there that there was a one of the tests is that if you're if you're operating under kind of a thousand pounds a year so if you're only selling off small numbers of fish very occasionally they're not going to be interested in you and they're not going to be coming knocking on your door trying to get you to uh, sign up with the local authority but for instance in my situation i've been selling fish locally to clubs to uh, local people on facebook groups and forums and things like that for quite a long time here um it's always been small time so i'm probably kind of on the cusp of that thousand pounds over a year thing and um, but maybe I'm, I'm not sure but in the last month I've decided to try and centralise all that so rather than selling to clubs and selling to individuals on Facebook which again is a great area so I spent the last couple of weeks building a website to put all my fish related stuff there together again you can click a link on that and check that out down below but that was going to have a shop section I was going to start selling fish I'd looked into couriers and um, shipping fish through the post and visited some couriers who are licensed to do that sort of thing um, but now it's a bit of a grey area because that's definitely a business in the eyes of uh, the government so they could come knocking I don't want that so I'm not going to be listing any fish yet um, just to be on the safe side so I'm going to go to the council uh, request the various forms you have to fill in fill them out get the inspector to come out and see what happens uh, and it's one of those things so that, let's say this is not my livelihood but there are people whose livelihood it is or who a contribution to their overall income is made up through the kind of hobby selling of fish so you might need to think about these things um, what's not included though is shrimp and other invertebrates like snails and things like that plants um, any maintenance or services you provide that aren't necessarily selling fish so if you look after some fish tanks or do some fish tank maintenance and things like that as i do occasionally then that's not included in this um, new legislation but there are people out on the internet on forums who are kind of going crazy saying that like, that means no one's allowed to sell fish on ebay anymore or no one's allowed to sell fish on facebook groups um, putting warnings out to say make sure you go and you get the the licensee number of someone who's selling you a fish that's not necessarily the case or at least that's not my interpretation of it and if i'm wrong then i will hold the hands up and by all means start a discussion down in the comments below or on the facebook page or anything like that because it is interesting and it's, there are some nuances as to how you would interpret this and it's not quite as clear cut as it used to be or as many things are um, but i don't necessarily think it does mean that that people are now no one can make any money from selling fish it's a lot the various tests that the guidelines go through seems to make it quite clear that as long as you're not a business and they kind of describe what those businesses are and they even make a point of saying things like there are exemptions and they give examples of fish club meets or swap meets and things like that um, it's also worth noting that a lot of this this is the animal welfare act or the animal welfare reform a lot of it's kind of slanted towards cats and dogs uh, fish birds all that kind of stuff there reptiles they seem to be down the list because a lot of the guidelines um, they don't really apply to a lot of things other than cats and dogs and I can understand why that is because they are the most popular pet out there I guess um, and at the end of the day this is all it's coming from a good place in that this is meant to raise the standards of everyone uh, for the benefit of the animals that are being sold as pets and that can only be a good thing so I, I guess I'm kind of happy about it but I can see how small businesses especially that 
fish shops and things like that, they're always very running, very low margins, and they're kind of cutting it close to the line at the best of times. A whole new raft of paperwork and expense and licensing to go through. Especially when a lot of the inspectors, they're not really going to be geared up to do this for fish shops and fish businesses, so I can see why it might grate a little with those people. Um, but yeah, again, let me know what you think down below. So I've got the guppy fry tanks there, I'll consolidate that into one. I'm going to split the guppies out into their own individual colour matches. Um, and obviously I've got the bristle nose tanks in here. This, believe it or not, this tank was cleaned two days ago, but look at all the crap that's in here. But still, really good producers, this, this lot. I've got tons of babies in there, all hiding obviously, so you can't see them, but there's tons in there. And then I've got my snail tanks up here. There's just some guppies in there temporarily, and that one and that one. And then this tank, I'm trying a bit of a black water tank, so I'm going to try and breed my cardinal tetras, or spawn them anyway, and see if I can catch that on film. And then obviously we've got this tank, which was my planted tank. Um, in the last video you saw me setting up the CO2 system that's here. I've taken all the advice, I've moved down the diffuser as low as it'll go. Um, and I've also got a power head over there which is trying to diffuse those or spread those bubbles around a bit more. So this is the kind of before and hopefully in about a month's time you'll start to see some growth and I can show a before and after. Um, but already I've never seen plants purling before but I don't know if you can catch that on the camera but they're definitely doing that. And there is definite growth in there. I think that leaf's a bit dodgy, but that was when I put it in there. These are all plants that I've just taken out of other tanks, so they're all cuttings and things like that. I'm going to try and grow them on, and then again, they can be up for sale as well. So we've got water sprite, we've got Amazon swords, we've got some Anubius, some Val, uh, Sorotala, Junkish weapons, all kinds of stuff in there. So this is just going to be a planty tank. It will have a few fish in there, just some, there's some plex in there at the moment, trying to take care of that algae on the back. Um, but it's just going to be a plants tank, a plants for profit tank. I'm going to try and see if I can get myself enough money to put towards running this fish room because it costs an absolute fortune in water and electricity. Um, but here is some of the snails. Some of these I was sent by one of my subscribers, or somebody on Twitter actually sent me them along with the lovely artwork. Uh, and there's some of the reds, browns, blues, and mix. There's some shrimp in this one with some of the yellow guppies temporarily. And then over here we've got this guy obviously. He's still growing and eating like there's no tomorrow. Let's try feeding this guy. We've got a few of his favourite treats in here. Start off with a few prawns. I'm pretty sure he doesn't get full and he would just explode if I let him. Try a little snail. Oh, he's missed it now because Mr. Because he's come out, he's confused him. Right, I'll give you one as well. Few bloodworms. So this guy's mostly getting snails every day, prawns every day, bloodworms every now and again, and that gel food mix that I made in one of my earlier videos, he really loves that. And he's getting quite a varied diet now, completely off the live foods altogether. Except for the snails.
there we go thanks for watching everyone remember if you haven't subscribed click that button down below and i'll see you next time bye, bye.